Hey guys, so it's been three weeks since I've posted a video and for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you probably already know or could guess why it's been taking so long to get videos uploaded. This behind me is the reason why. So my wife and I uh, just purchased this home behind us and we have been slowly moving in slash remodeling slash doing a bunch of DIY projects over the last two and a half weeks or so. So we've been super duper busy, but that is not the point of this video. If you are curious about our progress, stay tuned to the end of this video. I might do a little quick tour of how messy everything is. Um, anyway, in this video, what I wanted to do is to give you my first impressions of a lens that I tried out at Sony Condo 3.0, which is now a month and a half ago. It is the Sony 90 millimeter F 2.8 macro, which is a G series full frame Sony lens. I spent one full day with it and I have to say that I was very, very impressed, hence why I'm making this video about it. So let's get started by taking a look at this lens. Here is what it looks like mounted on my A6400. This is with the included lens hood. It is a very sturdy feeling lens in the hand. It's pretty long, but it's not overly heavy. For the size, I think the weight is about perfect. It does make the front of the camera a little bit more front heavy, but this is a full frame lens, so you can expect it to be a little bit bigger than an APS-C equivalent lens. On the side of this lens are a couple of cool features. Number one is this switch, which allows you to select from three different focus modes. The first mode gives you the entire range, so you can focus very close as far as macro photography, or you could focus on a subject far away and use this lens for portrait work at 90 mm. The second mode is kind of a standard up close macro, which means it won't focus on far away subjects. And the third mode is really, really up close, which means it's not really going to focus on anything that isn't inches away from the front of the lens. The second thing that you'll see on the side of the lens is a switch for the optical stabilization, which is a bit weird because every full frame Sony mirrorless camera has IBIS or in-body image stabilization. As I've shown in videos in the past, when you have an optically stabilized lens and you add the IBIS, it does make a bit of a difference, especially on a longer lens. And because that stabilizing element is much closer to your subject, it makes a big difference. The third thing on the side of this lens is a customizable Sony button, which is something that you see in a lot of G series and G master series lenses from Sony, but this allows you to customize whatever this button does. So depending on what you're trying to do, you can program it to do a whole bunch of cool, fun things with your camera. The fourth feature of this lens that I wanted to talk about is the focusing ring. Now, the autofocus on this 90 millimeter lens is amazing. It's very fast, it's very accurate. I wouldn't say it's as fast as the Sony 85, but it's pretty close. I mean, you can get a portrait nailed down, focused within a matter of a half of a second. For macro photography, the autofocus struggles a little bit more, but it's macro photography. Autofocus isn't always the best option in that case, which is why I think that this focus ring is one of the best that I've seen. So what this lens has is a manual focus ring clutch. What that means is that you can slide this focus ring forward and back to engage or disengage the autofocus. Once you engage this manual clutch, you can take it and use it just like you would any other manual lens. There's no drive-by wire focusing that you have to worry about. It becomes essentially a manual focus macro lens. What's great about this is that a lot of lenses have a switch on the side that allows you to select from autofocus to manual focus. You kind of have to fiddle around and find it. Whereas if you're shooting macro photography and you're really close to your subject, you don't have to worry about finding any switch or any buttons. You can push this focus ring forward or back and switch between autofocus and manual focus. So that is it for the lens. I think it looks great on the Sony a6400. Obviously it's a little bit big for the smaller camera body, but it works. So let's take a look at some sample photos and videos using this lens on my a6400. All of these are handheld, all shot in one day. Here we go.
That is it for the sample photos and videos. The thing that impressed me most about this lens is just how versatile it is. You can use it to take a portrait just as well as you can use it to take a macro shot of a bumblebee landing on a flower. Not very many lenses out there can do that. I've tested a lot of good macro lenses that are terrible portrait lenses, and I've tried a bunch of portrait lenses that can't do any macro at all. This is essentially a no compromise solution to having a macro lens and a great portrait lens. Now, it's f2.8, but the portraits are super duper sharp. I would say they are very, very close, if not a tack sharper than the Sony 85mm that I tested on my a6500, I think it was at the time. In fact, I was doing a little bit of research about this lens, and I found that it scores very highly in sharpness tests. In fact, it's one of the top three or top five sharpest Sony lenses on the full frame available. And because this is equivalent to 135 millimeters, the depth of field is nice and thin for portrait work. So your out of focus areas, your bokeh is nice and creamy, even though you're just at f2.8. Now, speaking of aperture, f2.8 is plenty fast enough for macro photography. In fact, it's too fast for a lot of the really up close one-to-one -one magnification stuff. Um, but for portraits, f2.8 is excellent. So you probably won't be shooting wide open macro shots, but if you do use this lens for portraits, you'll be shooting f2.8 all day long. The colors on this lens are excellent. Skin tones are really nice on the a6400 paired with this lens. Surprisingly, there is not a whole lot to talk about as far as distortion with this thing. Vignetting was noticeable a bit wide open, but it was very small and easily correctable in post if it bugs you. I just used these images straight out of the camera and I thought that they looked excellent even with the little bit of vignetting. The last thing that I'll mention is again the autofocus. So I talked about how accurate it is and how snappy it is relatively. Now note that it has to focus from very close to very far out to very close to get your subject in focus. So it takes a little bit more time than a standard lens like the Sony 85 f1.8. But what I noticed about this lens is that the autofocus system is near silent. I mean, it's, you can't hear it at all in the camera, at least I didn't hear it. And what's also nice about the autofocus system is that nothing moves as far as there's no barrel that sticks out or moves in and out with this lens. All of the focusing is done internally. So if you're really close to a subject and you're using that autofocus, you don't have to worry about it moving and scaring your insect away and you losing the shot. Now, when you focus really close on a subject using this lens, it will give you that ever important one-to-one -one magnification ratio. So if you're taking a picture of a ladybug, let's say it's a one centimeter long ladybug, that one centimeter wide ladybug will appear as a one centimeter wide ladybug on your sensor. Those are my thoughts on the Sony 90 millimeter FEG f2.8 macro. It is an excellent lens and I was certainly impressed by it just by using it over the course of one full day. Uh, it was one of those lenses that you grab and you want to go out and shoot and no matter where you are you can take a picture of something up close, something far away. It does amazing at everything. So I definitely highly recommend you guys check that out, especially if you have a full frame Sony lens. As usual, I'll post a link down below to where you can check out pricing and purchase one of these lenses. I will say that this lens is a bit on the pricey side, especially for Sony APS-C users. If you have a full frame, you're probably used to the more expensive glass that you have to buy for your more expensive Sony cameras. Uh, right now it's sitting at about a thousand. Sometimes it goes down to like 900 if you see it on sale. Um, but again, links down below, so check pricing if you are interested in purchasing one of these lenses. Thank you once again to Sony for sending me out to Condo 3.0, super duper fun trip if you guys ever get an opportunity. And thank you guys for watching, stay tuned for more. Uh, and I promised you guys, if you stayed till the end of this video, a quick tour of the house behind me. So this is the outside of the house, good old state of Texas. Uh, this is the lawn that I just recently had to mow and it took quite a long time. It's the first time I've ever had to mow a yard. Um, we've been living in a condo and an apartment before that, apartment in Japan. So this is the entrance. Um, we are swapping out the floors. The floors are disgustingly dirty because we've been painting and cleaning and taking out sheetrock. We had um, some can lights installed just yesterday all throughout and a kitchen here. 
The weird thing about this kitchen is that it has pink countertops. We'll be looking at updating that in the future, but for now, not going to do it. Janessa is organizing her brand new dresser uh, bed. We still need to get a mattress for, so this room is a work in progress, but we did get can lights. We painted, put a new ceiling fan in. Do you like the house? Yeah. Um, so there's a little breakfast nook. The backyard is nice because it's nice and spacious out here. So there's a, a deck here, um, some trash all around. The, we're still cleaning up a shed. That is where I keep my mower. Nice trees all around and more of the deck and then the side of the house. So has two ceiling fans outside, which is Cool. So back into the living room. Uh, this is another project that I'm working on. I'm going to be taking all the sheetrock down because we're going to put tile all the way up the wall and try to mount the TV up above the fireplace. So that's one of the upcoming projects and then new baseboards all around as well. Um, down there, laundry room, boring. So this is the exciting part. So baby Lucas is sleeping. We have a uh, bathroom that's a work in progress. A nice guest room here with a huge window and huge ceilings. And then this is the part that is going to become eventually uh, my YouTube room. So see can lights came in here. Um, I did the trim work around the doors and it still needs to be painted and then new baseboards. Uh, we still need to caulk all of those. So this is a, uh, the next project after the fireplace uh, and there are crazy lines because of these leds i'm excited to have a dedicated space to record videos and edit and put all my camera gear instead of just doing everything in the living room although who knows once we get a couch or sectional in here I might want to start doing YouTube videos in the living room again. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for those of you who stayed all the way to the end. Uh, more videos to come. I'm excited about all of the new releases, uh, the two new lenses, two new camera bodies. Everything's on order. Everything's going to be coming in. So a lot of fun things coming up. Uh, thanks again for all of your comments, all of your support, all of your likes. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.